uh, in person as much as possible uh, during COVID here. Uh, today, I'm going to share with you what I shared last night in prayer meeting, and that is one verse of Matthew 5, 44. This is actually Jesus' first uh, command uh, that uh, has to do with prayer. And so I thought the Lord's Prayer was, but in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, 44 comes between, before Matthew 6. And so I'll give you all the notes here, and we'll talk through those. Uh, Matthew 5, uh, 44, uh, verse 43 uh, says this, in Matthew 5, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your enemy and hate your love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. For he makes the sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. So uh, before this model prayer of Matthew 6 that we've seen the last few weeks, Jesus' first teaching focuses on praying for our enemies. We asked ourselves last night, why is the very first command to love your enemies as the first command of praying? And this has to do with a priority. It also may have to do that Jesus asked something that was very hard first or something that was impossible without God's help. Because this teaching in Matthew 5 comes at the end of a chapter that Jesus gives us impossible to obey commands. And when you share the gospel with someone who's an unbeliever who thinks they have obeyed the Ten Commandments, Matthew 5 is a great a passage to keep in mind because it intensifies and shows God's intent for the Ten Commandments. For instance, if you uh, think that you're obeying, thou shalt not kill. If you have anger in your heart and hate someone, you've already committed murder. Uh, thus, people who are guilty think they are obe obeying the Sixth Commandment, thou shalt not kill. I've actually broken uh, God's intent for that command by hating someone. Uh, the other one, uh, Matthew um, 5 talks about, and there's many, um, but the other one that's, that's common is uh, someone says, I've never committed adultery. And Jesus said, if you've lusted um, for someone that you're not married to, then you are uh, guilty of committing adultery. So people that Jesus was sharing this with thought they were right with God. And Jesus says in Matthew uh, 5, 48, unless you are perfect, you must therefore be perfect as your father in heaven is perfect or you're not going to get into heaven. And so Jesus uh, gives these impossible uh, to obey commands and praying for those who persecute you is an impossible command for people trying to earn God's favor without God's help. But these commands of uh, not hating and not lusting and praying for your persecutors are distinctly Christian or spirit controlled uh, praying. Those who persecute you are obvious enemies. In Luke 23, 34, if you want to pause and go there in your Bible, Luke 23, 34 says this. Jesus, um, on the way up to Calvary with his cross, gets to the top of the hill, and they probably are laying him on the cross, or uh, they've put the nails in his wrist and his feet, and Jesus cries out, uh, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they're casting his uh, casting lots to divide his garments, and the people stood by watching. But the rulers scoffed at him. He saved others; let him save himself. If he is the Christ of God, his chosen one, and the soldiers mocked him, and called him the King of the Jews. And then the criminals uh, railed at him as well. So everybody around Jesus is his obvious enemy. In the middle of all this hatred and scoffing comes this voice, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And a Christian is going to follow Christ, especially in praying. And so privately in your prayer life, how much have you prayed for your enemies? See, we need to ask for God's help because if we're going to apply this passage, there is nothing in us that wants us to pray for um, and us naturally that's going to want us to pray for obvious enemies, those who want to um, get rid of us, those who want to uh, make our life very, very difficult, and it's obvious they don't like us. We need to ask for God's Spirit's help uh, to pray for obvious enemies because it's clearly God's will. Uh, 
that we pray for our enemies. This is the very first command that Jesus gave regarding prayer. The second thing we can do to apply this is we expect God to remind us of this passage when future enemies come. And we could pray that, God, I don't know of any enemies right now, but if I'm going to live godly, I'm going to expect persecution. Persecution comes to those who are faithful to the word and faithful in evangelism. And so uh, we can expect God to remind us of this passage when future enemies come. And then we asked last night, what does praying for your enemies or those who persecute you look like? We want our first reaction to be a godly reaction to someone does something against us, like Christ's reaction to him, them nailing him on a cross and putting him in the hole and setting him up. His first reaction appears to be he's praying for God's blessing. And for those who don't know Christ, it's asking uh, for uh, forgiveness for them, for repentance, for salvation. But sometimes the hardest enemies that you may have as a Christian are fellow Christians. And so when someone speaks evil against you online or in person or behind your back, gossiping about you, making your life difficult, causing people not to trust you, whatever it is that, um, that makes them your enemy, uh, you can pray that they'll grow as a Christian. Obviously, repentance for them and, and forgiveness. Um, but pray that God would would use you and use this um, prayer uh, command to challenge us to pray for enemies because you can't pray for someone who's your enemy and hate them at the same time and if you have a hatred for your enemies uh, and god commands us to love them this is how we show love for our enemies and then we look for ways to be a blessing to those so we pray for our enemies and we look for ways to be a blessing uh, to our enemies, and you'll find that you, you can't have bitterness and hatred in your heart for someone while praying for them and reaching out to be a blessing to them. So I hope this uh, Matthew 5, 44 uh, challenges you uh, to live like our Savior, and your uh, private prayer life should have a, at least a category of praying for your enemies and planning to pray for them, and uh, that we could follow Christ in this way. God bless you.